Did you just spend another weekend doing laundry? Do you feel like you were never caught up? We can fix that. Stick around. Hi, welcome to Tight Ship Mama. My name is Gina. If you are new here, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. I make a new video every Monday where I talk about running your home like a tight ship. We do this with budgeting, decluttering, meal planning, implementing routines, and a little personal development. Today, you are joining me in my little girl's room. This is a room shared by a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, and we are gonna talk about why you feel so overwhelmed with all the laundry, because chances are you probably just have too much stuff in your house as far as clothing goes, but we're gonna focus on the kids today. So first question I know you might be thinking is, do I involve my kids with this process? For this age, no, I don't. Uh, same with toys and things like that, no. I'm the mom, I make the decisions. So I've never had a kid question where something went or cry and make a fuss that it's gone because they are gonna be left with what they truly wear and what they truly love. Now, as my kids get older, I have a 10 year old and a 14 year old, we'll do what we call fashion shows. And that's because I really need them to try things on. And we'll just take maybe an hour and they will literally try on every single thing they own and we decide together what stays and what goes. And by that age, they're old enough to realize like it's just too small or it's out of style or maybe they wanna wear it one more time, okay? So then I know when it comes to the wash, that was there one more time and it goes right to the donate pile. I do this a few times a year with the little ones because they grow quickly or the seasons change and it's a time to declutter. I also know that my four-year-old is our last child, so as soon as she outgrows something, it gets decluttered straight away. So, kids are not that different from us. And I used to be in sales, and we used to discuss something called the 80-20 rule. You may have heard of it before. It's when 80% of your business comes from 20% of your customers. We wear about 20% of our wardrobe 80% of the time. So, that means there's 80% that we can probably get away with donating. Our kids are no different, and we're even no different when it comes to our babies. You probably had your favorite outfits that you put on your kids over and over again. You probably had that really, really cute outfit that you spent a little bit more on, only to find out that when you went to change a diaper, there was not enough time to do all those buttons. So it got relegated to the back of the closet and it really didn't get worn, right? As our kids get older and start dressing themselves and deciding for themselves, they're gonna reach for the stuff that's comfortable, that they love, and that's their 80-20, okay? So we're gonna focus today on getting your kid's wardrobe down to what they actually love, what looks great, and what gets worn, and you are gonna see the laundry just go down. So when I declutter, I do this a few times a year, so then it only takes me a few minutes. It took me about 15 minutes to do two girls' um, dressers and closet this past time that I decluttered. You can see here that I start with just pulling out the socks and the underwear drawer because this is a really easy place. It's not an emotional place to start, so we're gonna pull that out and anything that is too small or tattered or not great anymore, we're gonna go ahead and donate that. If things are still decent, I may pass it on down to my four-year-old. If you don't have a younger sibling to pass on the clothes to and they're still in great shape, but they're just not getting worn, go ahead, thank that item of clothing for its service to you and for being cute and send it off into the world for another mommy to put on their own kid and enjoy and go ahead and donate it. If it's not getting worn, it's just taking up space. Okay, so now after you've decluttered their drawers and their closets, you are left with only the things that they love and they wear and you are done. But I know you have questions, so I'm gonna address now some common obstacles that I hear. If they don't have much clothing, won't I be doing laundry more often? Having less stuff, whether it's clothing or dishes, is a lot like having a personal trainer. It forces you to get it done. You probably feel like you're drowning in laundry because the job isn't getting completed. So you might wash it 
and maybe it sits and you're like, oh, I gotta wash it again because it sat in the washing machine. Maybe you washed it and dried it, but now it's sitting in the basket ready to be folded. Maybe you washed it, dried it, folded it, and now it's sitting ready for people to actually put back in their drawers. Maybe it does make it back into their drawers, but maybe your kids took out 15 different outfits only to settle on one and the other 14 end up back in the hamper perfectly clean. I've been there, I know. So if you follow me, you'll know that I recommend doing a load of laundry every single day. This is what I do after the kids get their pajamas on. I pop in all the clothing from that day and I will wash it. And before I go to bed, I pop it in the dryer. So having less is actually really a lot easier than you think. I will give you one example. My daughter is 10 years old and she bumped up into the middle school this year and they wear uniforms to school. So we weren't really clear this summer what school was gonna look like this fall. So when we went to buy her uniform, I said, let's just get one and make sure that you're in school <laughs> because I didn't wanna spend all this money if they weren't even gonna be going to school. So we are now in November and one uniform has been fine. She has one uniform. Now, if your kids don't wear uniforms, you're gonna need a little bit more than this, but so she'll put her uniform in every night when she goes to bed and I wash it and they pull it out of the dryer in the morning. So what's left is just my clothing, my husband's and my son's. So it's a really small amount of clothing for me to actually then fold and put away. And it takes me minutes to do that because three of the four kids are wearing uniforms so they're pulling all that out of the dryer in the morning. So it's really not that bad. Another example I have is sheets, okay? Each child has one set of sheets. And when, I, when they make their own beds in the morning, if it's their day for their sheets to get washed, I'll say, hey, instead of making your bed, please take your sheets off and take them down to the laundry room. When they go to school, I pop in the sheets or something else during the day. Um, because I know they only have one set of sheets, it's top of mind, okay? I'm not letting it sit in the washing machine because um, I'm constantly reminding myself like, oh, don't forget, don't forget. Um, we do have one extra pair of twin sheets just in case I forget or somebody gets sick, something like that, but we don't have a ton of stuff, okay? So then it might, I, sometime in the day, I'll pop it in the, into the dryer and then when we do bedtime stories is when I'll probably remember like, oh, we need to make your bed. So before a book is read, we run downstairs, they get their sheets, we make the bed together and it's all done. I never have to fold sheets, okay? Less stuff, more life. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. What if I'm not done having kids? Okay, this is a good one and it's a common one and I've been through it, of course. So if you're not sure if you're gonna have more kids, then if you have the space to store clothing, go ahead and store it. I'm not here to tell you that you can't keep anything. It's all up to your comfort zone. You might keep twice as much as what I have, but you're okay with that amount of laundry. It's all up to you. You'll know by um, just your feeling of overwhelm whether you still have too much stuff, okay? So trust your gut and the more you declutter, the easier it gets and the more ruthless you're gonna get. It's just a muscle that needs to be strengthened. But, um, so let's say you, you don't know if you're done having kids, all right? Go ahead and hang on to whatever you wanna hang on to, but only hang on to the very best stuff, okay? Stains tend to reappear later on somehow. I don't know why, but if you put stuff away nice and clean, it still seems like stains will surface. So only save the very best stuff that you loved. Um, sometimes, I didn't save anything because they wore it so much that even if it's still in great shape, I was just kind of tired of looking at it, okay? Another common question. We don't have a lot of money. What if I'm gonna need this someday? Okay, if you've watched me for about 20 minutes, you know my biggest belief in life is that when you need it, God will provide it. And I need you to trust in that, okay? I'm gonna give you a quick story. Um, I could give you 15 of these stories, but here's one. I was looking for a backpacking backpack, like you see here with my husband carrying my daughter. I wanted one of those things, right? And they are hundreds of dollars and we hike a lot. So once we had our second kid, I knew we were gonna need something to kind of corral her <laughs> on the trails and things. So I 
sent a quick message on Facebook because I was looking for research to buy one, okay? And I put a message out on Facebook and I said, I'm looking to buy a backpack for hiking. Can you guys recommend some that you love? No joke, within half an hour, I had not one, but two offers for free ones. So I took them both and I gave one to a friend that is not on Facebook and was also looking for a backpack. We then kept that backpack for three kids. That backpack has been from Maine to Florida and back again. All right, a lot of miles on that backpack, but it was such a blessing and I trusted that when I needed it, God was gonna provide it. And that's for something that's a really niche item, right? I'm not talking like, hey guys, I need a t-shirt, right? So trust that when you need it, it will be provided. Another question, how do I handle hand-me-downs from friends or family? Okay, this is a big one. I know this is a big one for mommies and we tend to say yes, yes, yes for everything, right? And then we're drowning in laundry and we wonder why. So I'm a big believer in defining your yes in so many areas of your life because when you define your yes and you know what exactly you want, the no's are very, very obvious, all right? So at different seasons of my motherhood, I have had different yeses. So for my first child, my I had a boy, uh, he didn't have any hand-me-downs. He was a first grandchild on both sides. Everything was brand new. So grandmoms were really excited to buy clothing. My aunts were really excited to buy clothing. I had just quit my job, so I really was still like, we still had a decent amount in the banks. So I was like, I'm buying this kid stuff. So he was good. Uh, then I had my son that, uh, if you follow me, uh, he passed away. And so I didn't save a ton of stuff from my first son to my second son. And then I had a third pregnancy and we were gonna be surprised. No, we did know, we did know she was a girl. So I had another friend that had a, a little surprise baby girl, okay? So since I had nothing for my daughter, my oldest daughter, my yes for accepting hand-me-downs was yes, yes, bring it, I'll take it all, I'll take it all. And she, she wore everything from this other little girl. I wasn't picky about what it was, what it looked like, what the brand was. I just needed stuff, okay? Um, and then she was a really, she was a, she was definitely a little bit of a difficult child. So I thought I was done after her and I gave everything away. All right. Um, but then she got better and you start getting to that phase of life. Where you're like, eh, one more, why not? They're so cute. So we had another one and we had another little girl and that little girl. So now she doesn't really have that much stuff either. And I became friends with a girl in my neighborhood that had, um, she has five now, I don't know what she had at the time, but we had a bin that we kind of shared among a, a couple of women. So you would get the bin, you would take what you needed, you would add what you didn't want, and it kind of circulated a little bit. So, and you know, and I filled in with stuff that I bought because by then I had my style that I liked for her. So that was kind of my yes, was like, you know, I was a little bit more selective about what I took. Now, my yes is really limited. Um, I like what I like. I like to see my kids in certain things. I buy better, but I buy less, and that's how I do it, okay? So there's no right or wrong answer to this question. Just know what you need at that time, and if you're decluttering, you're gonna know what your kids need. So if a friend offers you a bag of clothing and you know, um, let's say this, this child, for instance, you know, I need a size five pair of jeans. Do you have that in that bag? No? Okay, then no thank you, okay? Um, you, you have to decide what comes into your house. You're the CEO, right? You're the captain of the ship. If they're giving you a whole bag of clothing and you don't want 99.9% .9 of it, that was not a blessing. I know they're trying to help you, but it's not. It's just bringing clutter into your home that you now have to figure out what to do with and get rid of. So just ask them very quickly, do you have what I need? Your yes is a pair of jeans right now. Maybe it's a pair of snow pants right now. Have your yes in your mind. Don't accept anything else It's not in that yes. How do you maintain the level of clothing in your house? Okay, so let's go back to that scenario where that friend was offering you a bag of clothing, right? But now let's say that friend has really good taste, all right? Maybe they buy stuff that you could never afford to buy, 
all right? So it's tempting, right, to take the whole bag and be like, yeah, I'll just take it, right? But again, you know exactly what your kids need. So you're gonna go back to that previous question and you're gonna see if they have what you need. If you don't need anything, but you know they have great taste, feel free to go through the entire bag. And this is where we come into my maintenance rule. My maintenance rule is one in, one out. So if there's a really cute pair of pants in that bag, you have to decide, do I want these really cute pair of pants or do I wanna keep what we already have? Hmm, are they cute enough to get rid of this? If yes, then go ahead and donate that, okay? And that's how you're gonna maintain what comes into your house and the amount of clutter that comes into your home. All right, and um, the things I'm trying to teach you on Tight Chip Mama are really about living within your means. And it might be your financial means, it might be the confines of your home, so the drawers and the closets, like how much stuff can they actually hold, and your time. So how much time do you really wanna be spending on cleaning and cooking and maintaining? Um, when you get things pared down in all aspects of your home, you're gonna have more time for what you really wanna do. And that's my ultimate goal with this channel, is your home will eventually run itself and you will be freed up to do things that you really want and you won't spend another Saturday missing out on the fun because you are doing laundry. Have a great week, moms. And if there's any questions, please hit them, um, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and I will try to answer them because I know kids clothing is a hot topic for mamas. So have a great week and I'll see you next Monday. Take care.